I'm Chris Clayton with DTN, the Progressive Farmer. I'm here with Yami Andrew, co-founder of Cer Cerveceria Primus, a microbrewery here in Mexico. Yami has been telling us that uh, 10 or 11 years ago, there might have been only a handful of microbreweries in the country, but now there are over 400 of them. Uh, Yami, what has been some of the growth that has happened in the microbrewery industry in Mexico? Chris, thank you very much. Uh, well, in Mexico, uh, it's been very similar to what happened in the U.S. Uh, 20 to 25 years ago. We are behind uh, the American trend. But in Mexico, it's a bit different because, as you know, Mexico is the number one exporter of beer in the world. Uh, we, we brew a lot of beer. Uh, that doesn't mean that we have all the, all the supplies to, to make beer in Mexico. We have to import a lot. So one of the main struggles we had when we started the brewery was to source uh, good quality raw materials and that made our beer a little bit more expensive. Fortunately, we found uh, consumers were willing to pay more for our beer. So uh, in Mexico, uh, craft beer, I think, is proportionally more expensive than in the U.S., but consumers are willing to pay it, and that's been making us grow uh, uh, faster than 30% each year our sales, and that's something happening uh, in the last couple of, of years. Uh, the last three years, we have seen the appearance of at least 200 new microbreweries in our country. And what kind of grains do you guys have to bring in from the United States or Europe to uh, make your brewery work and why do you import uh, your grains? Well, uh, we for all of our beers, and I can speak for most of the Mexican microbrewers, at least 80% of them, we, we have to use a two row, two row uh, barley. And this barley, we have to have it already malt. In Mexico, the only two malt trees are owned by the big corporations, by ABI and Gautomo uh, Tsuma uh, Heineken. So uh, we have to import our barley already malt. Um, the, the malts we use, uh, we use mainly uh, base malt, but of course we have to use some specialty malts. So um, we import most of this from the US, a little bit, a little bit from Europe, just to make the, the European styles. Um, and what I love about the, the, the malts that we import is that they are very clean, they are very efficient. Uh, if you put your hand inside of any of these bags of malt, you will find your hand clean at the end. Uh, and it's because it's very clean, very sharpened, and, and, the, and the contents of sugar are incredible. So if you want to make a great craft beer, you have to, great, to have a great raw materials, and that's why we are importing them from the U.S. Uh, and then how important then is access to that grain uh, tariff-free or without any real restrictions from the United States to uh, keep your business growing? That, that's very important, not only for the craft brewers, but for the 100% of Mexican craft beer industry. So as I told you, Mexico is the number one exporter in the world uh, of beer, but we are not self-efficient or self-sufficient with the, with the supply of barley. So uh, we have to import barley. We import it mainly from the US. And that's because it's very convenient for us, not only for the distance, but it has a great price. So what I think is if right now the NAFTA is working a lot to make Mexico the biggest exporter, it's not be because only Mexico uh, can do it by itself. We depend on the source of your raw materials, uh, of the raw materials produced in, in the US. Well, uh, thank you, Yami. Uh, this is Chris Clayton with DTN, the Progressive Farmer, enjoying some of uh, Yami's products. Uh, and uh, we'll be following some, continuing our tour through Mexico with uh, Jim Patrico. Have a great afternoon.